that you're here tonight, and we are again excited to be back in the house of the Lord, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, hearing from Dr. Geiler, and, and uh, I was excited to begin hearing Pastor Tim's uh, ser- series of sermons this, uh, this month as we lead up to Easter. I was in Super Church, so I'm going to have to watch it on the YouTube channel uh, when we get that posted, but uh, uh, I'm excited about that. I know my Savior lives, and uh, what an important truth, uh, not just for Easter Sunday, but for every day of our lives. And uh, if we will believe that, it will affect everything we do in our lives. And so I'm thankful for that, and I'm excited to hear from our pastor uh, throughout this month as we're looking towards Easter and excited about that. But we are excited to have Dr. Geiler here as well today, and uh, looking forward to hearing him preach the Word of God for us tonight. Uh, looking forward to the rest of the meeting and to having the choir here and all these things. So uh, we're excited about the opportunity to be here uh, today. Don't forget about some of the things we have going on. Uh, our uh, Easter service is coming up soon, and in the morning service, our choir will have a special presentation, and, and uh, we've been working on that and getting prepared, and I hope you'll be praying uh, for that service. Just the Lord will, will use all that we have going on to, to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and that the, the message uh, of the cross, of uh, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ will just be, uh, will just, uh, will will be evident to everyone that's there, and, and our, our desire is that uh, we'll be praying and inviting uh, people to come and be a part of our service. I hope there are lost people here on Easter Sunday so they can hear the message, and uh, we're praying that we'll see uh, the Lord save souls on, during those services. So don't forget about that. Then our children are practicing for an Easter program that they'll have on the evening service on Easter Sunday, and so we're excited about it. Pray for all these opportunities and use the resources we have. Uh, they're located over in this wing. There's lots of resources we can use to invite people, let them know about our services, and uh, 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 invite them to come to be a part of what we're doing. So we're excited about that. Our building with the Bible hour, our, uh, our, uh, what we're doing in our Sunday school hour now, we started, this, we started today, and we had a great start. And uh, we were excited about that. If you didn't come this morning, uh, you didn't. Uh, you you still can get in, and we want you to come and be a part of that. There's a class in the ministry center, and there's another class in the conference room, the, the college room that we have over here in this wing. And we want you to come and be a part of those. To, both those classes are listed in the bulletin. You can check those out. And uh, we we every. Body who makes Tri-State Baptist Temple their home ought to be in the building with the Bible hour and, and just hearing the truth from God's words so that we can grow together and uh, just draw closer to our Savior so that we can serve him and live for him. But we're thankful for all these things and excited about it. Uh, after the service tonight, I do need some men to help me. Uh, we need to set up tables and chairs uh, for the choir tomorrow, and so I need some of you men, just as soon as the service is over, to come over and help me, and it won't take us just a few minutes to come. Drew shook his head no back here. I caught him. <laughs> yeah, he's just kidding. He's just kidding. And uh, but Come and help me, and we'll get done really fast and be ready to go for tomorrow. If you're going to help us by bringing some of those items uh, that we need, uh, make sure you have them here tomorrow. We'll send the sign-up sheet around again. If you didn't get to see that this morning and you want to help participate, uh, make sure you do that as well. And uh, we are looking forward to hosting the choir and being able to feed them and uh, all the things we have going on today. Uh, after the, at the end of the service, we'll take up a special offering for Dr. Geiler, and uh, we want to be a blessing to him and encouragement to him. Uh, but at this time, I'd like my ushers to come. We'll take up our tithes offering and, and faith uh, promise offering, our regular tithes and offering and faith promise missions offering here today. And so this offering is our normal offering, and we'll have a special offering at the end of the service for Dr. Geiler, uh, so you can uh, be prepared for that. But we are thankful for a great day. All right, let's Let's pray for the offering. Amen.
Uh, we think about one of the one of the most exciting ministries of the year here in our church, and that's our summer youth camp. And uh, the first full week of June, beginning on June 4th this year, that's a Monday, uh, all the way through Friday of that week, we take boys and girls to church camp. And we go on Monday, and we don't come back till Friday. Uh, we have second graders all the way up through the 12th grade. Every year we have somewhere around 75 or 80 children that we take away to go to the summer camp. And that's just a great week for us. And we, uh, we go to a great camp here in West Virginia. And we just have a, a wonderful week. And God speaks to our hearts. And we have fun together and great food and all these things. And uh, we're beginning to think and pray about that. And on Sunday night, we, uh, we ask everyone in church that, that would like to just invest in camp. If you have some pocket change. Maybe you have, uh, maybe you went out to eat after church today, and uh, I promise you, when you paid your bill, all you got back was some change. That's all there was left, probably just a few coins. But if you still have that in your pocket, or ladies at the bottom of your pocketbook, get it out, and we're going to receive that, and we put it over here, and we put it in our jug, and uh, we, uh, we save it up, and then we cash it in, we use it for church camp, and it's just one of the great weeks we have all year. We hope you're praying about going and helping. And, uh, and some of the students from Marietta often go and help us at church camp. And it's a great week. It's a great opportunity to go and to be a part of camp and kind of see what we do and, and get involved in, uh, in, in, in what we're doing and, and, uh, and be a part of that, be used of the Lord. So uh, we're looking forward to it. But we're going to receive our change offering. And what we do is we use all of our preschool and elementary age boys and girls to help us take up that offering. So they're going to come on over here and get their special offering of taking up cups, and uh, they're going to help us out with the change offering tonight. These boys and girls are working hard learning and practicing for their Easter program, and uh, they're going to be sharing their Easter program here uh, on Easter Sunday night, and uh, we're looking forward to that. That's going to be a great time. All right, everybody's got a cup. We're going to stand real still, okay, and we're all, come on, Paisley, come on. children that are here. We pray that each and every one of them will come to know you as their Savior and then know what a joy it is to live for you and to serve you. Lord, bless the camp and the offering tonight. Provide and meet the needs. And Lord, may it just be a great week, uh, God, where you do a work in our hearts and lives. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, if you have some offerings, I'm going to hold your hand up there. And uh, don't put mine in. I'll pick that up for you.
Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. We appreciate your help doing a great job with our camp offering. And we hope that you'll be just praying for and preparing uh, in your own home for camp. And uh, we'll be receiving offerings as we get a little bit closer to the week of camp to meet the needs. And God can use you in a great way. Just plan, plan and prepare ahead and uh, be ready for that. But it is a blessing to have you here tonight. It's been a great day for me. It's just been a exciting day. We started off with our new building with the Bible hour during Sunday school and we had uh, a really good response to that. We had good turnout and, and if you weren't able to get out here this morning for the building with the Bible hour, I hope that you will next week and get involved in one of the two class options that are going to be given uh, this month and then next uh, week we're going to have the sign up sheets for the classes that will be offered in the next month April and uh, you can go ahead and pray and ask the Lord where he would have you to be as far as, as sitting in on one of those classes but uh, we're teaching and preaching the truths of God's word here uh, in our building with the Bible hour and so we hope you'll be a part of that Sunday mornings at 930 and then uh, then to be able to get started with our Easter sermon series today uh, I know my Savior lives and we looked at the at the king has come this morning from Matthew 21 the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ the the command of the king and the crowd in the king and the cleansing of the king and uh, we're looking forward every Sunday morning now to uh, preaching and looking at the events and circumstances before and uh, and after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And then to know Dr. Geiler's coming, the choir going to be here tomorrow night. Uh, I told everybody this morning, this has been Super Sunday for me, rather than Super Bowl Sunday. So this has been a great day, and we're excited you're here. And don't forget, tomorrow night the service is at 7 p.m., and the choir will be here. We're going to feed them a good meal at 5, and uh, then they're going to come in and sing for us. And, and uh, I, I got to go to the prayer conference up at the, the church and the school in February, and I came back telling the church, Dr. Geiler, that I don't think I've ever heard the choir or any better groups of singers that you've had in a long time. There's a great group, talented group. God's using them, and we're thankful for them. And so I'm excited for you to hear them and sing, hear them sing tomorrow, and uh, it'll be a blessing. If you've never heard the Marietta Bible College Choir, uh, you want to come tomorrow night at 7 and hear them. There's probably close to 100 of them, I'm sure. And uh, they're going to fill up the whole choir loft, and they'll be standing around all the way down here, and, and uh, they'll fill up the front of the church. And uh, the Marietta Bible College is one of the most unique schools in the country, and they're training young men and women to serve God all around the world. And the majority of the students are from other countries. They're from different countries. Uh, many are from the Philippines. Uh, the greatest country there is New Guinea, isn't it? Papua New Guinea, that's the best group of people there. And uh, Flynn believe, agrees with that, but uh, all over the world. And, uh, and they're there to train, to learn, to preach, to teach, to serve, to minister, to further their uh, preparation to serve God. And then God uh, sends them back uh, around the world to their countries, and they reach others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's a tremendous, tremendous ministry. And you're going to enjoy the choir tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Invite someone to come and, and be sure to be here then. But it is a blessing to see you today. Thank you for coming out and being a part of our services. Uh, it's always an honor for us to have Dr. Geider with us. And, and I tell you all the time, I believe he's one of the greatest living preachers in the world. And I say great because he's let God use his life in a great way. That's why. And uh, he's had as much influence on my spiritual life as any man I know, and I, I'm thankful that I can call him and uh, I can talk to him, and uh, I'm blessed uh, to have uh, him in my life, and, and we're blessed to have his ministry here over these next few days, and so we're looking forward to hearing from him. Uh, he's brought some uh, folks with him today, and uh, these young ladies, they're going to they're gonna sing for us here a little bit, and, uh, and uh, you know, a lot of the groups that he has, they they kind of all want to come up with a good catchy name so you don't forget them, don't they? They, they want you to, you know, they, they're, they're the swamp grass group or they're somebody. And, and so, you know, you've got to have a catchy name. So I asked these girls if they had a name, you know, the group for their name. And uh, they said, oh, no, preacher, we don't. We're just the little girls. We're just the little people. And uh, they are probably exceptionally kind of short, even for you all, aren't you? 
uh, but we're just going to call them the little women or something like that, all right? But they're going to come and sing a little bit for us here before Dr. Geiler preaches. So you girls come right ahead. Be sure to tell us who you are, okay? Give us just a little introduction and tell us who you are and where you're from and be a blessing. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Hannah Joy Corpus. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Philippines. I'm Dazel Luis from uh, Philippines, 22 years old. I'm Michelle Edirio from Philippines, 22 years old also. All of 23 <laughs> years old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear for anyone. nothing into something he's the giver of life his hope to the hopeless and his sight to the blind he makes impossible seems possible when there's no other way he makes the blanket sin white as snow that's why we can say God can do anything with anything. He can heal any hurt, any suffering. Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear for anyone, anywhere. God can do the fairest of ten thousand, my soon coming King, Jehovah Messiah, the reason why I sing. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, my Savior and Redeemer, He's my closest friend. God can do Every cross, every care, every burden he'll bear For anyone, anywhere, God can do anything God can do anything with anything
admit I don't understand why God would let me face this painful circumstance. All I have to cling to is his word and his name, but that's enough. So I will trust. It's for my good and for his glory. This trust at the end of the story. There's a bigger picture. God alone can see. It will take me through this sorrow. For I know he holds tomorrow. And he assures me it's for my good. me. He'll work all things for good. Through my tears I believe that His ways are higher than any of my own. And though my heart aches, He makes no mistakes. It's for my good and for His glory. This trust that the God alone can see. Faith will take me through this sorrow, for I know He holds tomorrow, and He assures me it's for my good and for His glory. God alone can see. It will take me through this sorrow, for I know He holds tomorrow, and He assures me it's for my good and for His glory. Thank you. We appreciate that. Great, great singing. We're thankful to have these ladies and uh, be glad to hear the whole choir tomorrow night. And uh, you're going to be here for sure and uh, just be a part of that. And uh, we're looking forward to it, but we appreciate them. We're all going to take an offering at the end of the service for uh, Dr. Geiler just to help him out as he's traveling back and forth here over the next few nights and, and uh, uh, taking care of... Uh, fuel in the truck and uh, all these kind of things. He's liable to have to feed some of these kids every now and then. That won't be cheap either, so they can eat a lot. So uh, we want to help them out, and uh, we'll receive an offering at the end of the service tonight. But we're thankful for uh, Dr. Myron Geiler and uh, uh, president, founder of the Marietta Bible College. And uh, every time I'm around the school, I just think about what a great investment he's made with his life. And uh, all of those students who who have come through that school and who are now out somewhere in the world uh, reaching uh, others with the gospel. And uh, you can do some spiritual gospel multiplication and uh, see what a great return he'll have in eternity for his labor and for his life. And I'm challenged by that, blessed by it, thankful for it. And uh, I don't know of any preacher I'd rather hear preach than hear him preach. And uh, there's things that I've heard him say in messages and and thoughts and truths that God's used him to bring out that I still remember years and years and years and years. Uh, I know that it's not always that way with preachers, is it? You can't even remember what I preached to that this morning already. It's gone. And, uh, but I can remember things that, that God used him to speak to my heart about for years. And, you know, sometimes it's just that way, and you can just remember. 
because God uses him in your life. And I'm thankful for him and uh, what he's doing, and God's blessed him. And, and so we're glad he's here. And uh, we're going to ask him to come and just share what the Lord's laid on his heart tonight with us. And uh, we're thankful for him, and uh, we appreciate him. Thank you, brother. It's a joy to be here. I always enjoy coming to Tri-State. I enjoy being with Brother Jenkins, his family, Brother Evan. I feel close to this family and Chuck Harrell and his wife. I've known them for years and we work together so much. I just feel almost like a part of their family. It's always great to be with them. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but I've been ill, and I thank God every day for another day of life and health to be about, and I'm not going to talk about my illness and what I've been through, but uh, I'm not as strong as I used to be. I'm in my 84th year, and my wife will be here tomorrow night directing the choir, and she's in her 77th year. I want you to pray for her. She needs double knee surgery or replacement. She doesn't want to have it until school's out, try to make the choir trips, and after that, have it. But she's trying to make it, and she's in great pain. And she'll come tomorrow night and direct the choir, but pray for her because she has pain every day and almost all day. So uh, we appreciate your prayers. Uh, Flynn drove me down. Flynn, uh, I don't drive much anymore because I got a fibrillator right here. I thought they'd put it down where my heart was, but they put it up on my collarbone. Got it at the Cleveland Clinic. And uh, it's never shocked me yet. They put it on there to shock me. If my heart does certain things, it's supposed to kick. If it does, I'll jump over the pulpit tonight and <laughs> land down there. And, and, uh, but it's never kicked so far. But I don't want to drive because I really don't know what would happen if that thing kicked and I was driving. So Flynn's driving me and appreciate him. He's getting married in two weeks. Yeah. He lost his mind last winter. And <laughs> No, he's marrying a lovely girl, Lily. Wedding will be over at Hillsboro. And uh, God bless him. He's a good man. Got a good future. And uh, God's going to use him. <clears throat> Tomorrow night, the choir will be down between 90 and 100. Uh, they're looking forward to coming. This will be the first choir trip this year in 2018 and we're glad we're coming here and the students some of the students have been here before and they're looking forward to coming back we have these girls this is called i call them the little people's trio <laughs> dr bobby robertson just passed away a, a week ago down in winston-salem one of the popular preachers in america we went there every year every year our choir went to his church and he called the choir of the little people, Filipino. So this, this group, so little people trio. But we got another group called Mercy Singers. And they'll sing tomorrow night. You're in that group, aren't you? Yep. And we got, uh, I don't know whether Caroline and Grace Tom's ever been here or not. Have they? But their brother came in. Uh, their brother, and he's a big, tall fella, and he sings with them now. So those three, uh, two sisters and their brother, will sing together tomorrow night. And then uh, the entire choir will sing. they got new songs, a lot of new songs. And uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow night to see how they'll sound. So uh, be glad to see, they'll be glad to be here tomorrow night. <coughs> All right, uh, I don't preach as long as I used to, for which you can be thankful. 
and I won't keep you long. That's what Elizabeth Taylor told her eighth husband. <laughs> I won't keep you long. And uh, I'm not as vivacious as I used to be. I sort of have settled down in the pulpit. But so bear with me. Father, bless thy word. Thank you for your word. Lord, we wouldn't have anything to preach if we didn't have your word. We preach your word, that wonderful word that you gave to us, complete. You never left out one thing we need to know, and you never told us anything we didn't need to know. We thank thee for thy word. Bless it tonight. Bless, give me strength. Help us to teach. Help us to preach the Word of God. In Christ's name, amen. Go with me back through the years, even beyond Calvary, back centuries. Moses brought the people out of Egypt, stopped at Mount Sinai for two years, was given the Decalogue and the ceremonial law of God. They were two years there. Not only did he give them the law, he gave them a tabernacle and said he would dwell in it. He's going to live with them now. They're going out into the wilderness. He's going to be with them in the tabernacle. So after two years, they started and uh, it was 11 days to Canaan. They went north. They stopped at Kadesh Barnea. And there some tremendous things happened. And God turned them around and they went south. And they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years, 38 years. And I've heard preachers and teachers say, oh, it was terrible. They could have been to Canaan in 11 days, and it took them 38 years. But do you ever think of it? God led them south to the sea. At the sea, he destroyed Pharaoh and his army. If they had gone north, there would have been no sea. And the armies of Pharaoh would have come down on them without hindrance. And God, in his wisdom, turned them around and they went south for 38 years. I am teaching at the Bible College right now a concept of every book in the Bible, and we're, floods have held us up and other things. But we've had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and, Deut and Numbers. And uh, Genesis shows us the sovereignty of God, sovereign in creation. He did it his way. Sovereign in election. He chose Abraham, not Lot. He chose Isaac, not, he chose Jacob, and not Esau. He chose Isaac and not Ishmael. He was sovereign in election. And he chose you to know his son. And the book of Genesis teaches his sovereignty. The book of Exodus, bringing them out of Egypt, shows his power. The book of Leviticus shows his holiness. And the book of Numbers shows his goodness. After that comes Deuteronomy, the second law. Moses went through it again. After leading them for 38 years, and Moses is now 120. They come up to the Jordan River, and across the river lies Canaan. 
Moses cannot go in. So he, before he dies, preaches. He preaches what some have determined and divided four messages. Some Bible scholars say it took two weeks for him to preach it. Over two million people are in the Jordan Valley. I don't know how he amplified his voice, but they heard him. And he gave and read and preached the book of Deuteronomy. And then he knew that when he got through, he would die. And he did. Went up Mount Pisgah, Mount Nebo, and died. God had his funeral. No pallbearers, nobody was there. Just God. And God never wanted anybody to know where he was buried or those people would have made a shrine out of that place. They would have worshipped that place. So God wouldn't let them know where he was at. John Calvin was a great teacher in the Reformation. And he taught in Switzerland. Martin Luther was the preacher of the Reformation. John Calvin was the theologian. He wrote the institutes. He taught them. Young men gathered around him and he taught them. He had a school. They came one day to kill him. And the boys took their shirts off and tied them all together and let him down out of a tall building with a rope made of their shirts. There was a group of people coming down the road going to go work in a vineyard, carrying tools and baskets. He just joined in with them and put a hat on and walked along with them and escaped. But one day John Calvin died. He had made arrangements with his students to bury him and never tell anybody where he's buried. People know where Luther was buried, John Wesley, George Whitfield. Nobody knows where John Calvin was buried. And Moses the same. God never told. While he's preaching to them, he said something that I want to preach on tonight. It's in Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Easy to remember. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Though some verses of Scripture is just loaded. When you read them, they just really speak to you. They cause your heart to want to search them out. And here's a verse. Moses preached this some two weeks before he died. The secret things belong unto the Lord. God has secrets. They belong to him. He will not share them with any angel or any man. God has secrets. The secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us. So we got two things in this verse, secret things and revealed things. The secret things belong to God. The revealed things are ours. And to our children, that we may do all the words of this law, all of this was that we might do his secrets, our revelations, 
was that we would do right. The secret things belong to God. You know by nature, you and I don't like secret things. We want to know what's in there. We want to examine it. We want to find out things. We don't like secrets. We don't like the unknown. We want to know. That's our nature. It's not all bad. Henry Ford wanted to know if an, in a gasoline-fired engine would move a vehicle that a man could ride in. And he worked, and he worked on a motor that would be propelled by gasoline and a slight explosion of it. And he made a motor and he put it on four wheels and it was called an automobile and he made hundreds of them. The Model T Ford, the Model A Ford, because a man wasn't satisfied with the unknown, he delved into it to find out what made it work. And on and on, men have done that. Thomas Edison wanted to know if a fire inside of a glass under certain conditions would inflame and cause light. He ran about a thousand exper experiments and couldn't determine how to make that fire burn in that bulb, in that light. He'd work and then lie down and take a nap and then work all night until he found out how that light right there works and made it to serve people and cities and power because he didn't like the unknown and he delved into it and I could go on and on about many things. The telephone, the cable, the telegraph, all of those things. Wilbur Wright out in Dayton, Ohio can that motor fly? Can it lift a man up and carry him? And in a bicycle shop, they worked on that until they took that motor and a frame and it flew. Now we have airplanes because of the unknown. We don't like the unknown. But God has secrets. You might as well stand back and say, I don't know. And we never will know. You can delve. You can probe. But there are certain things God knows that are secrets. And he'll never reveal them. One thing is in Isaiah 40, Isaiah 40, he has secrets about creation. In Isaiah 40, verse 12, he asks a question. Can anybody answer it? Can anybody? Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and made it out heaven with the span? and comprehended the dust of the earth in measure, and weighed the mountain in scales and the hills in a balance. Can anybody tell how he holds the Pacific Ocean in his hand? Can anybody tell how he holds the Atlantic in his hand? Can anyone tell how he put all of those stars into space until they say there are galaxies 
and 600 billion, not stars, 600 billion galaxies. Who can count them? Who can know how he did it? And who can weigh a mountain that he made out of dust? Who can measure it and weigh it? Who hath directed the Spirit of God, or being his counselor, hath taught him? Who ever taught God anything? Those are secrets to God. How he holds that ocean. It only goes so far up onto a shore, and he stops it. The galaxies of stars, the mountain made of dust, the Alps made of dust, and who could weigh them? God has secret about creation. He's got a finite mind and we don't understand. God has things that are secret and for his glory. Never shares certain things with men. Never shares them with angels. Creation really is a secret. We can say this or that but we still don't understand it totally. In the first chapter of Genesis, down through those verses, he made, he made, he made, he made, he made. But did you ever notice made is in there many times, but creation is only three times? He created the heaven and the earth. Then he created the fish and the animals, and the insects, and cattle. And last, he created man. There's three jump starts in creation. One was at the beginning of creation when he made the heaven and the earth. He separated what he was doing from everything before. And we don't understand everything that's in the past. We don't understand eternity past. But he started that day with a new heaven and a new earth. He created. It started something new. <coughs> and when he created the animals and the fish, he separated and stopped grass and trees. And then he started creating animal. A difference, a new beginning of things. Trees don't move around. Cattle do. Trees and grass does not produce, reproduce like animals. He started something new there in creation. Then you come on down and after the animals and everything, he made the horses and cows and cattle and fowl and fish. Then... He created a new start, man. And he separated that new start from the past. And he separated the animal world from the vegetation world. And he separated man from the animal world. Now, isn't it amazing? Most of the biology teachers and science teachers that will go in the classrooms of public schools tomorrow will put it all together. The animals came out of a previous state and man came out of the animal kingdom when God broke completely from the animal kingdom to create man. Uh, tell every young person you can that. Show them the three creations in Genesis 1 because most Bible uh, biology teachers and science teachers don't have any idea what they're talking about. We need to teach Sunday school and tell young people about creation. I was in Romania under communism and they said the way they got the young people was through 
evolution that they had no responsibility to God because God didn't make them. And they really went wild because they had no responsibility to God. That's what evolution teaches. There's no responsibility. Right? But he created. But the way he did it is a secret. We don't understand it thoroughly. We don't understand it. That's a secret. That's one secret. Another secret. <clears throat> no man knows the day or the hour, not the angels. <coughs> Angel, we have a word, omniscient. We got it from the Latin. It means God knows all. Omniscient, all knowledge. Omniscient, all knowledge. We believe God has all knowledge. He's omniscient. Angels are not. Angels don't know everything. In fact, Peter said they, they wanted to know more about salvation. <coughs> than what had been revealed. They wanted to know more about salvation. They're not omniscient. Excuse me. <coughs> I was thinking one day, don't, don't tell anybody that I said this was in the Bible. I just say I was thinking, since angels don't know everything, I was wondering about Christ leaving heaven and coming down to earth. And since the angels don't know everything, I just got to thinking, maybe the angels were going around up there saying, we hear he's going to leave. We hear the Son of God's going to leave heaven and go down to earth. It's around. That's what they're talking about. Some are singing about it. Yeah. I wonder what it, how he'll go down. Well, there's some thinks that he will get a mighty white horse, a charger, and go down as a great military leader, and he will overthrow Rome the first days there. Because if one angel could destroy 180,000, 5,000 Syrians, what could 10,000 angels do if Christ went down and called them? They could overthrow the Roman Empire in one day. Well, maybe he'll go as a great scholar. Instead of leaving, living in Jerusalem, he'll go to Athens where the philosophers are. He'll teach where Socrates taught. He'll taught where Philo taught and Plato and Aristotle. He'll teach. Maybe he'll be a great superior teacher. Maybe another angel said, maybe he'll be a healer. He'll go down and heal all disease. Everybody that's blind will receive their sight. Everybody that's lame will walk. He's just going to heal the world. He's so they discussed it. Then he went down. He went down. He didn't go down as a military uh, victor. He didn't go down as a healer. He didn't go down as a scholar. He went down in all humility and laid in a manger in a stable. When the angels of heaven saw that, he didn't go as a military, he didn't go as a healer, he didn't go to the scholar. He went as a baby. That's humility. Ah, the Son of God so humble. He was born in a stable. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It made heaven burst with a song when they saw him in the manger. Now that's not in the Word of God, but it may have happened that way. Something made him sing. Something made him declare a great declaration. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. But 
It's a secret when he'll come back. Not even the angels know. If you go up to heaven tonight and said, when's he going to go down and get to church? They don't know. It's a secret. And God has secrets, and they are his. They don't even belong to angels. He keeps secrets that are his. One more. We don't know. Eye hath not seen, and ear hath not heard those things that he hath prepared for them that love it. We, he, it's a secret what he's got waiting for us in heaven. It's a secret. No man has ever heard, no eye has ever seen. Some men did have the privilege of looking into heaven. John on the Isle of Patmos, Stephen when he died. Paul, who went up, but somehow God shielded things until I hath never seen nor ear heard what God hath prepared. You can see about everything on television. So I saw him interview a man. He said he died and went to heaven. And he was right there on that program to tell about heaven. Do you know what he said? He said when he was up there, he saw a dump truck. A truck where the, the back goes up and spreads slag and all of that. He said it was spreading gold. Dump truck in heaven, dumping gold on the street. He saw it. But God said, no man hath ever seen. No man hath ever seen. And you hear people say, I died and I, while I was dead, I heard, that I heard the angels. That Cajun preacher down in Louisiana, Duplantis, he said he died and went to heaven from a best western motel and met Jesus and Jesus wanted to know what was going on down on earth. And Jesse told him. Jesus didn't know. You know, I thought, sure, God knew everything. There are secrets. We've never seen what God's got prepared for us. Oh, folks, won't it be wonderful when you step through the gate and see it? You can't imagine what it'll be like. You can't imagine the brightness of a diamond. Light that's not somewhat yellow like the sun, but bright and clear like a crystal. Oh, my. My mind can't touch it. I can't even think of that. So I just think about seeing Jesus. We'll see him when we go. Now, that I've mentioned three things that are a secret to God. The way he created. Heaven. And when Jesus is going to come. That's secret. There's no need to read a book or try to find out why. They are secret. And God says the secrets of God are his. And he has revealed things to us. The revealed things are ours. We got some wonderful things tonight that he has revealed. First of all, he has revealed Jesus. And John says, we saw him in his glory. We beheld his glory. That's God. John said, we saw him. We beheld him in his glory. 
He revealed Jesus to us. And the characteristics of God. When Billy Graham died, they talked and talked and talked about God, all the politicians. The President of the United States said, Billy Graham accepted Christ. Christ? Not another person that said Christ. It was all God. Billy Graham accepted Christ as his Savior. It's the only time Christ was mentioned. Yet, they're one, the Father and the Son. If you see Christ's love, you've seen the love of God. If you've seen his power, you've seen the power of God. If you've seen his wisdom, you've seen the wisdom of God. They are one in Trinity relation. Aren't you glad that in this world of darkness and false teaching and isms and schisms, God has revealed Christ to us. And we know who he is, where he was born, how he died. We know he has revealed Christ to us. He also has revealed to us how to be saved. God commendeth his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It's been revealed that we have a substitute. We have one that took our place. He died for us. God, even there's so many things I don't understand. I don't understand how a virgin girl living in Nazareth would conceive in her womb by the act of the Holy Spirit and the Son of God be born. I don't understand it. I accept it. I believe it. I don't understand it. I don't understand his death altogether. I know he died for me. But think of it. The Bible tells us about his hands. Nails, tells us about his feet, a spike, tells us about his brow, torn, tells us about his back, lacerated. And in verses of scripture following his death, they mention feet that were pierced, nails that were pierced, a side that was torn, a back that was lacerated. Oh. Do you know the Bible never says anything about his face? Except his visage was marred. Why does the Bible never mention, along with those hands, his feet, his back, his breath? Why never his face? The face is what reveals pain and suffering. If you go to the hospital and someone is really suffering, you don't see it through their feet or their hands. You look at their face, it's drawn, it's contorted. The eyes are closed. The mouth is gapping because the face reveals the pain and the suffering of an individual. I've had a friend, a, a lady that has a farm and cattle. And she got sick and it determined it was cancer. And she died. Two days before she died, I drove to Zanesville. I said, where is Morrison Hospice House? They told me I went to Morrison's Hospice House to see my friend. Lovely building. I walked in, a bit dark, and I said to the nurse, 
I want to see Ruth Burns. Oh, come with me. Took me down a hallway, dark, dreary, and said, she's in there, in that room. I went in, the nurse walked beside of me. And when I looked and saw her, I saw her face. People, I've been visiting sick people for 63 years. But I couldn't look at her. I couldn't look at her face. I turned around to the nurse and I said, nurse, I'm a preacher. I've been calling on people for 63 years. Usually I can handle anything. But I can't look at her. I can't look at that woman. And she said, I understand. Because her face was revealing everything that was wrong. But the Bible doesn't say much about Jesus' face. Because. We couldn't understand the agony that was demonstrated and revealed through his face. Oh, if we'd seen his face on the cross, the visage was marred. And I can't understand the depths of his suffering. God has showed it to us. He has showed us his death. He has showed us that Christ came into this world. He showed us that he died. But there's some things about the incarnation, his birth, I don't understand. And there's some things about his death I don't understand. And a body taken down, laid in a tomb, dead. And it walks out alive. I believe that. But it's hard to understand. But I believe it. There's some things hard to understand. The secrets belong to God. The things he has revealed belong to us. And I look at life. There's some things I don't understand. They seem to be secrets of God. I don't understand why. <laughs> the doctor said, you've got cancer, and it's life shortening and the doctor said you need surgery and they took organs out of me for 10 years I've worn a urostomy which I have to change twice a week takes about two hours have to use all kinds of anesthetic or that which kills germs. Certain materials have to be put on here that was made by scientists. And for 10 years, every day, I've worn this. I've slept with it for 10 years. It's uncomfortable. It doesn't let me travel as I used to because it can go wrong all of a sudden. If I'm away from home and I don't have the materials and everything, I can't function. I don't understand that. I don't understand. I don't understand why I walked down the steps, walked around the kitchen table four times for exercise because it was cold outside and sat down and everything went black. Then it came back and it went black again. And my wife called the emergency squad. And big guys came in, lifted me up, and put me on a table and put me in the back end of an ambulance. And down the road we went. 
and a man stuffing my mouth with aspirin and on the phone to the hospital were coming and his heart is running wild. I got to a hospital, they shoved me in a room, doctors all around and nurses, and a guy comes at me with two electric shocks and put them on my chest and shocked me. I don't understand. So, took, got my heart in rhythm and took me to intensive care, shoved me in there for a week and wouldn't let me stand up and my legs have never been the same. I was in there, there's a nurse. At night, two o'clock in the morning, I said, nurse, you know, they brought me to the hospital. I don't know the name of any doctor that met me down there. I don't know the name of the doctor that shocked me. I don't know the doctors that's taken care of. I don't know the doc. I don't know any nurse, any doctor, anybody. And here I am being taken care of, and I don't know anybody that's doing it. And they've never talked to me. I said, I'd like to know if I'm going to make it or not. Can you go down there to nurse's station and read what they wrote or said? Oh, I'm not allowed to do that. I get in trouble. I said, nurse, I'm a nice man. If you don't go down there and read that and come back and tell me what it says, I'm going to get you in trouble. <laughs> she went down. She came back. Did you read it? Yes. What's it say? <laughs> they think you're going to make it. I don't understand why I was there. I had so much to do, to teach, to preach. So many things to do. I don't understand it. There's so many things in life I don't understand. I went to church in a little old church in the country. Your pastor saw it. It was closed for 35 years out there in the country. Everybody there went away to work somewhere and never came back till they retired. They're tearing that church down. I went over and said, hey, stop. I went to Sunday school here. I won't buy it. I contacted the hierarchy. I want to buy that church. They sold it to me. Started putting it back together. They'd taken a beautiful stained glass window out, damaged it and everything. The frame of it was still there. Set that frame back. They said, there's a man that can fix stained glass windows. I went to see him. He's a Dutchman. He's a Roman Catholic. Nice man. I said, can you fix that one? Yes. Can I hire you? Yes. I'll be there Monday morning. He came in. He put a table out. And he had glass, all colors and pieces and shapes, and he spread it all over that table. It was just a jumble. One by one, he'd take a piece of glass, go over, get on that stepladder, and go up there and put it in. He'd come back down. He'd get another piece of glass, break it the way he wanted, and then he'd come back and get on that stepladder and go up there and put it in. Did that for two weeks, and I went up. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful stained glass window. I look at my life laying on that table. A very poor education in a rural grade school. Very poor education in a high school. Problems in college. A speech teacher said, with your voice, forget about preaching. He didn't know as much as God did. And your problems, and people that turn against you, and people that hurt you, 
and this and that and this and this. It's all a, but you know, God is going to pick up all those pieces one day and make of me a beautiful mosaic. And I will share his glory. And you will. You'll show his glory <coughs> when he puts it all together. You'll know then why some of those secrets are going to surface. Why? But then you'll bear the glory of God. Folks, we got glory ahead of us. All those pieces on the table are going to be put together. And you're going to be beautiful, even you girls. Thank you, Pastor. We know that, uh, uh, that uh, God's word deserves a response from our heart. And uh, I appreciate the good preaching. And, you know, I sat there as I thought about what he was saying and the message he was preaching. Uh, you know, there could be some people here tonight that through the course of life, you know, maybe there's been some things that have happened in your life. I'm sure it's true that you just, you don't understand. Maybe you don't have, you don't have the answer to it. And uh, you, don't, uh, you don't know why these things took place. And sometimes we can become so occupied with wondering why that we just can't get beyond them and maybe you're here tonight and you're struggling with some things in your life that happened and you don't know why they happened but I'm thankful brother Guyler let us know that you know we got, we have a God we can trust with the things we don't know and understand we may Amen. not know them we may not understand Amen. them but we can trust God with them and maybe tonight there's some folks tonight who just need to come and just say I need to give you some things I don't understand them, Lord, but I'm going to trust you with them. And I'm going to go beyond, and I'm going to move beyond those things. And I want what you have for me now. Because even though there's a lot of things we may not understand, I'm thankful for all the things he does want us to know, don't you? I'm thankful for the things we can know. I'm glad today to know that he's not willing that any should perish, is he? But that all should come to repentance. It doesn't matter who you are tonight or what your life has been like up till tonight. The circumstances, situations, the failures or the victories. He doesn't want any man, any woman to perish. He doesn't want them to live without knowing him or die without him. And I don't know your heart tonight. I, I know as you walk through the door of the church tonight, God has something for you. He has something that he wants for your life. And I'm thankful today that, uh, that God wants us to know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And uh, tonight you can do that. You can know Him. It's no secret today that we're sinners. No secret about it. We've sinned. And there's no secret our sin separates us from God. But there's a Savior. And uh, I'm thankful He's made known the Savior no man can come to the Father but through Jesus Christ. He's made known today the way that we can be saved. And uh, today that way is his way, and he wants you to know that way. Uh, we're going to pray together, and then in a moment we're going to stand, and uh, we're going to sing a verse of an invitation song. An invitation is a time for you to say yes to God as he's been speaking to you in your heart. And maybe as we get ready to sing, some of you need to come and just bring some things to the Lord and say, God, I'm going to trust you with these things and I'm going to believe you for the things I can know and trust you for the things I don't understand. And God, help me to know and to see what you want for my life and, uh, and move forward. Uh, maybe tonight there's some folks here that just need to come and know how to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You need to know how to how to be able to have the assurance of salvation and to know that your sin debt's been forgiven. So whatever the needs are in your heart and life, uh, as we get ready to sing in a moment, we want you to respond to the Lord. Uh, but let's look to Him. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your grace and goodness. We thank You for the Word of God that's been preached tonight. 
We thank you, Lord, for uh, the fact, God, that you are a God, that, Lord, we, we can't figure you out. God, you, you're far above and beyond our capacity to reason out or to understand. But, God, we don't want a God that we've got figured out. We want a God who's powerful and sovereign. And, Lord, we believe in that God tonight. And, Lord, we know there's many things in our lives at times we don't always understand why. Things that we experience, things that happen, or things that don't happen. Places we have to go and things we have to experience and things we have to go through. And we don't understand them. But, God, tonight we can trust you with those things. So, Lord, help people tonight if they're stuck in some place uh, in their life and they've not moved beyond it. And, uh, Lord, uh, they just can't go uh, on from that, those things. We pray they'll come and bring them to you tonight, leave them with you and trust you with them. And, Lord, they'll begin to desire to know the things, God, that you would have for them that they can do in their hearts and lives and what your will is for them. Lord, someone may have come to church tonight and they've come and sit down and, Lord, they're here this evening, but never in their heart and life have they ever trusted Christ as their Savior. They've never asked you, God, to forgive their sin that sent your Son to the cross. They've never trusted Jesus Christ and His finished work for salvation. And, Lord, there's maybe people here tonight, as we spoke about this morning, they, they've gotten caught up in an experience. They've had an emotional response to some particular circumstance or situation. But the fact of the matter is, Lord, they've never settled their salvation by the grace of God through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. So whatever needs are tonight, Lord, we're thankful that, God, we can know you. You've not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth concerning our uh, hearts, lives, and your will for us. God, you want us to know you. And so we pray today that God will respond to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand and turn to him 282 in our hymn book. And as we get ready to sing on that very first verse, we just ask that you just step out of your seat. You come tonight as the Lord leads you. Let's sing that first verse together. <clears throat> Second verse, verse number two. sing another verse in just a moment but don't uh, I just want to encourage you don't miss the Lord speaking to your heart tonight don't miss the work he wants to do in your heart and life just be responsive to him just uh, just say yes to him and allow him to do what he wants to do and we're going to sing one more verse tonight we're going to sing verse number five I'm thankful for what this verse says the Bible says if we'll respond to the Lord if we'll look to him, if we'll come to him, he'll receive us. And he'll welcome us and pardon and cleanse us and he'll relieve whatever the needs and necessities are of our life. So we're going to invite you, if you will, to come as we sing on this last song, last verse, verse number five. Let's sing that together, will you? Let's sing that together. Amen. <clears throat> Go back to the first verse and sing again.
Sing the second verse. Just stand by and wait to you fill my soul from one to one to me whose blood can cleanse each spot. Verse 3, just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fighting pains and fears within, without, O oh Lamb, O oh God. I come, verse 4, just as I am poor, wretched, and blind, sight riches clean of the mind, lay all I need in thee to Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, come forward and cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we again just want to say thank you for the privilege to be in church tonight, Lord, and we're thankful for the Word of God, and we're thankful, Lord, for uh, just the privilege to spend uh, time together, Lord, hearing your Word, and we're thankful, Lord, that your Word is powerful. We're thankful, Lord, that your Word, uh, Lord, will give us instruction and give us help, Lord, and we're thankful that uh, because of what you've done for us, uh, Lord, we can we can know you, Lord, and uh, Lord, thankful that you can work in our lives. We are, Lord, sinners, and we deserve to be separated from you. We deserve, Lord, to be, uh, Lord, eternally in hell and in torments. But because of your great love for us, Lord, you allowed Jesus to come and die on the cross for our sins so we could have salvation, Lord. We're thankful that Jesus is salvation, Lord, and that if we can accept your gift, Lord, we can have, uh, Lord... Your salvation, Lord. We're thankful for your love. And, Lord, we pray you continue to work in our church. We, Lord, love you. And, Lord, we're so thankful you've given us this place. And we pray, Lord, you continue to work in our hearts and our lives. Lord, help us to grow. Help us to be, Lord, so conscious. And just, Lord, give our lives to you and, and see, uh, Lord, uh, the work that you're doing. So we pray you continue to work and, and use us, Lord. And, Lord, we're just thankful for the great victories that you've won in our lives and you're continuing to win and Lord we want to continue to be a part of your great work but we do love you and we thank you for all the good things you do for us it's in the precious name of Jesus we pray and amen services and, and uh, we'll just see all that God will do. We want our men to come back if they will. We want to receive our uh, offering tonight. Uh, you can be seated for a moment and uh, our men are going to come back up and we're going to receive an offering for Dr. Geiler. What you give tonight will go uh, to him. We want to be a blessing to him and uh, we want to be an encouragement to him. Uh, but uh, we're thankful, thankful for him coming and being here. And uh, amen. That's uh, we want to be a blessing to you. Uh, 
Uh, don't forget to help us with the chairs afterwards, tables in the ministry center. That'll be a real help to us. If you're bringing food items for the dinner, try to have them here around noon or so tomorrow. If you want to come in and help prepare the meal and serve, get in here about uh, noon or 1 o'clock, and they'll be getting all those things ready to go. Thank you all for coming tonight, and uh, we're just blessed to be here, and we hope you'll come back tomorrow night. Uh, let's just ask God to bless the offering. Lord, thank you for the preacher tonight, the man of God, the message. Thank you, Lord, for your work in our hearts and lives. Help us be obedient people. Lord, you said if we just draw close to you, you'd draw close to us. And, uh, Lord, we can be as close to you as we want to be. And so, Lord, just help us all just to draw near to you. Lord, fill our hearts and minds with the great things that you've revealed to us. Help us, God, just to think about your grace and goodness. God, if we're saved tonight by your grace, we're not going to spend one second in hell. And Lord, any and every other good thing in life, that's just a blessing and a benefit of eternal life. And Lord, we just pray you would just help our hearts and minds to be stayed upon thee and uh, on the foundation of scriptures. Bless the offering. Help us be a blessing to Dr. Geiler, and we'll ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, our men are going to make their way right back through, and what you give will go uh, specifically to him. Thank you, ladies, for the good singing tonight. That is a blessing, and uh, we appreciate that. And, uh, and, uh, and Flint, you're getting married, my friend. That's good. Amen. I'm sure I know Lily. I'll see her. I'll remember who she is. I wish I would have caught her before this all happened. I could have maybe talked her out of it. No, amen. I'm excited for you. That's a blessing. And so we're looking forward to it. And uh, so we're thankful, thankful people. And we're glad you're here tonight. I hope you'll come back tomorrow night. It's been a good night. Tell everybody about it. And uh, in the morning when everybody starts in about how horrible their weekend has been and how all these bad things have happened. You just tell them about what God did in your heart and life on Sunday and uh, what a great day it was and uh, invite them out to the meeting. Well, we're thankful. Let's stand together and we're going to be dismissed. Uh, pray for Brother Geiler as he's traveling back and forth and uh, have good traveling and safety. And uh, I thought I should have called and told him I didn't think about it, but uh, he got down into Chesapeake and, of course, the roads closed up there. They had to come in and go down through... Uh, by the high school and things. I, I should have remembered and told him that, but, uh, but they've tried to close Chesapeake off and it didn't work. They had, you can still get in and out up there, can't you? But, uh, but they're going up through there, so be uh, pray in prayer for them. But it's been a good night, amen? It's been a great night, and so we want to look to the Lord and just have a word of prayer and just be dismissed this, uh, in our services here this evening. And uh, we're just thankful people. But let's look to the Lord. Lord, thank you for being good to us and gracious. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the truths. Thank you for the preaching. Thank you for the singing. God, thank you for every person in attendance. And Lord, we pray that, Lord, you'll just minister to every heart in life that, Lord, tomorrow we'll make every opportunity we can to share, God, what you've done in our life on this great day. And, Lord, encourage people to come and be our guests tomorrow night. Lord, we'll be blessed. And, Lord, we're thankful. And, God, we've got a lot to look forward to. And, uh, Lord, uh, if, we, if you would, uh, Lord, so see fit, you may come, Lord, again before tomorrow night. Lord, what a blessing that would be. Yeah. But if you don't come then, Lord, we got tomorrow night to look forward to. So, Lord, we're a blessed people, and so we just pray you'd encourage uh, us and, and encourage your people, and, Lord, may they uh, be used of you to invite people out to the meeting. Keep those folks safe as they're traveling home tonight, and, uh, Lord, bring them back all safely tomorrow. Thank you for what you've done tonight in the services. We pray it will have an, a, a lifelong, eternal impact in our lives and uh, our families. And uh, we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat>